and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've built my own DIY supercar using an old Audi as a donor car. Now on this episode we're going to cover something that's quite important but is usually forgotten when building your own homemade car and that would be the pedals. Uh, too much detail regarding the pedals, I just want to recap over the bulkhead. Now, uh, hopefully you saw the last episode where I was covering the bulkhead on this prototype. Now, you may know that I'm trying to use the dashboard and air conditioning unit and clocks, that sort of thing, from an Audi A6 as a donor car. That's if you've been following along. So, there's some restrictions. Um, I can't put the steering column where I want it to be. I have to follow where Audi put it. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I'm just going to show you a few images now on how I managed to get this steering column to line up with the dashboard and the chassis and the seat before I could make the pedals. Right, so I was using the original bulkhead from the first donor car, which is an Audi A6 C4, and I was using that as a sort of jig to hold everything in place. So let's just take a quick look at the first photo. Now hopefully you can make out, that is the bare steering column, you can see the ignition barrel there, and it's currently bolted to a bracket which is welded to the bulkhead of the Audi. That's the original Audi setup. Now, if this was a one-off and it was a prototype, then that would be fine. But because I'm thinking that this might be turned into like a, you know, a, a kit, then that isn't going to work. I have to come up with a bolt-on solution. So that bracket had to go. Now you'll see that there's some woodwork that I made, just a jig to hold the steering column in the correct position. So if we take a look at the next photo, that's a closer shot. You can see the original Audi bracket there that's welded to the bulkhead supporting the steering column. There's a top view. If you notice, it's actually twisted. Now this makes it a little bit difficult to make the new bracket that's going to support the steering column. I wish it was actually straight on, but it is what it is. There's another angle, just making sure that the steering column is completely straight. I didn't want the steering to be out or anything like this. There's another angle again. There's a close-up of the wooden jig that I made just to support the steering column. Now hopefully you can just make this out. If you look through the chassis, you should be able to see the steering column at a slight angle there. That's fixed. I can't change that, otherwise the dashboard won't line up and the steering bezel won't line up and there's a whole host of issues. So that's fixed in place. I can't raise it, I can't tilt it or anything like that. So I have to build the pedals around that steering column, which we'll get to later. There's another close-up of the steering column. Now, what I was trying to do here, and I did manage to do it, is I got the seat completely central to the steering column. I put a string, a plumb bob, so it went down, measured out, centered the seat, and that's how I got the seat to be absolutely spot on. I absolutely don't like steering positions where the steering wheel's over here or over here or something. Really annoying, so I wanted an absolute perfect driving position. Now, here's the jig supporting the steering column and the bulkhead has been removed and so has the bracket. So the bracket is now gone. It's, this steering column is now solely supported by that homemade wooden jig. There's another angle. As you can see, the steering column is in the correct position, ready to go. Now I could make the bracket. So here's the bracket that I made and Obviously the wooden jig has been removed and it's now supporting the steering column. 
and it is bolted to the chassis. Now this is what, one thing that I want to be very clear and hopefully those of you that have been following along know I don't want this car to use any fiberglass as a structural member. I don't want that. I want everything to be held by the chassis, by steel. That's including the doors, the seats, everything, including the steering column. So that's that bracket, that's now done. There's a close-up of the bracket and as you can see it's slightly angled. This bracket by the way, once I'd finished it, I did technical drawings so this could be easily replicated using like a water jet technology. You just cut these plates out, weld it in a certain way, it's a very cheap and easy bracket to make. There's the front of the chassis, now you can see the steering column and the steering wheel has been attached, that's all in place, there's no bulkhead, nothing holding the steering column, only that bracket bolted to the chassis. And that's another view from behind or in front, depending on your point of view. And there we go, that's the first one. So hopefully we're all up to date on how the steering column was positioned in this car and I could remove the bulkhead. So now, let's talk about the pedals. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's that steering column bracket once it was powder coated. Okay. Now when I started this project, I was pretty much certain that I would have to build my own pedal box assembly and I pretty much thought that the um, original pedals from the donor car were never going to work because they were just too big. Anyway, just touching on the first donor car, or the main donor car for this, which is an Audi A6 C4, um, the reason why I got the car so cheap, and I only paid £300 for it, is that the um, clutch pedal, or the bracket that held the clutch pedal, had ripped. So that the clutch pedal did not disengage the clutch anymore. And if you watch the previous episodes of me removing the dashboard from the new donor car, Audi A6 2.7T, you'll realise just how difficult it is to get to the pedal assembly anyway. So he wrote that car off. So anyway, here's just a few images of the original pedal box from the original Audi A6 C4 donor car. So, here we go. So, it was, um, it was pressed steel, so the actual framework that held all the pedals together was um, welded and it was made out of um, just flimsy steel, to be honest with you. There's the switch for the brake um, pedal. So, see if we can find the damage. Oh, there's another angle looking at the... the uh, if you see right down at the bottom, you'll see um, sort of like a grey tube with, a, some, with the Audi emblem on it. That's the actual uh, master cylinder for the clutch. And as you can see, it's at an angle. It shouldn't be. It should be completely straight. Um, there's a, you can see it again. It's looking all bent and twisted at the bottom there. Right, now there's the damage. As you can see at the bottom there, you can see the clutch master cylinder and the metalwork are just split and ripped out. Very poor design, and I didn't want this in my um, supercar anyway. Here's some more pictures. Now, one thing that, um, I, in fact, I might get the other pedal assembly for you in a sec, but what you'll find is that the brake pedal pivot um, has the clutch pedal pivot going through it. I'll show you in a minute but I wanted to keep all the bushes from this pedal assembly and make my own pedals. There's another shot, just um, so you can just note all the um, white nylon bushes, that's what I wanted to keep. And there's another angle, you can see the uh, master cylinder all ripped out of its mountains, completely wrote the car off. Other than that, the car was fine, engine was great, gearbox, everything, it drove and ran perfectly, but this wrote the car off. There's another angle, the uh, master cylinder is all bent and twisted out of shape. Now I have used this master cylinder in this car and we'll take a look at that in a bit. And that is the mounting plate for the servo and we'll go over that a little later. 
So yeah, so that is what happened to the original donor car. It got very tough because the pedal box was all knackered. And I just used a few bits and pieces off it to make my own pedals. Let's just take a quick look at the new pedal assembly and I'll show you what I mean why the pivot fits inside another pivot. It doesn't really make much sense, so I'll show you. All right, here's the brake assembly from an Audi A6 2.7T. Now, if you notice that this here is the brake pedal, travels up here, and then it goes through here to this arm there, which activates the servo, or for you Americans, booster. Now, the clutch pedal, which is here, pivots in, or should I say on, the actual shaft for the brake pedal. Um, I'll bring the camera in so you can take a closer look. So there's a the brake pedal, which fits in here. The shaft runs across to this arm here, obviously activates the switch, and then that activates the servo there. Now we take a closer look at the clutch pedal, which runs along here, and as you can see, it pivots on the shaft that the brake pedal actually works, if, you, if that makes sense to you. And this is very similar to the other Audi A6, the, uh, the uh, C4 model. Now if we take a closer look at the prototype braking system, you'll notice that there is a servo or booster, and I wanted to retain that from the original donor car and transfer it over to mine, because at the end of the day, this is a supercar, so it is really designed for road use. Now the servo helps with braking, and this one is um, activated via a vacuum created from the engine, and this one is hooked up and it works just like the original donor car. Now the way it works is there is a divider in between two separate chambers in here, and both chambers have a vacuum. Once you push your foot on your brake pedal, a seal is broken on the rear of the servo which gets rid of or removes the vacuum on one side and at the very same time that you do that, a seal is closed on this side of the servo where there is a vacuum and that helps your brake pedal pressure. Now, is that clear? Probably not. So anyway, here's a video explaining it for you. So later on, another component named boosters were introduced. The brake booster comes between the pedal and the master cylinder, and utilizes the vacuum from the engine, assisting the brake pedal and makes it easier to apply brakes. Let's take a look inside the servo. It consists of, a valve rod, dust boot, air filter, valve spring, diaphragm, diaphragm spring, vacuum check valve, hydraulic push rod, when you push the pedal, the valve rod opens the inlet valve, allowing air into the diaphragm front chamber through the filter. This air, along with the vacuum created by the engine in the diaphragm rear chamber, pulls the diaphragm, and furtherly pushing the push rod towards the master cylinder. Thus provides assistance, and reduce the effort in braking. So we all know how servos work and the reason why I fitted one to this car. Now, there's a few problems you've got to think about. This is quite a big thing, so you've got to find a location for it to fit. But there's a lot more. Here we have uh, the pedal assembly from the Audi A6 2.7T. So there's quite a bit going on. You've got to consider the height of the servo to the brake pedal and the angle of the servo to the brake pedal and the length of travel and all this. I'll tell you what, this is getting a bit complicated. I think it's time for Science Guy to show you with one of his drawings. Hello, I'm Science Guy and I have another fantastically drawn diagram to show you. So, here we have a diagram side on of a typical car. 
So we have the servo here, that's the brake reservoir, and that's the master cylinder. We have the brake pedal, your foot. This purple line here is the bulkhead, and this is the floor of the car. Here we have the dashboard, and this is the windscreen. And finally, this is the bonnet. Now, when you're designing your pedals, you've got to consider all this. Now, let me explain. Now, if you've been following along, you will know that to get my low slung um, driving position in my supercar, I had to cut away some of the floor. So, I have raised the floor. Something like that which in turn means that the foot has to be raised up. Now the most comfortable position for your foot is for the pedal to be around your toe area here. So if I've raised the floor up and your foot is now higher up here, this brake pedal is too low and you're going to be having to use your heel to use it. Now, if you've seen my Lamborghini Countach um, chassis, you'll notice that when I took that project on, someone actually did that. And they fitted a set of pedals that were so low that you needed to use your heel. So, here's an image if I can find one. There you go. So anyway, so to solve this, I've got really only one sort of solution, and that is to raise this area of the pedal. This has to go up. Now, you can't actually raise the entire brake assembly up because you'll find in most cars the pivot of the brake pedal is almost all the way up deep inside the dashboard anyway. So this top pivot here can't go any higher. Also, if you push the whole assembly up, then the servo ends up getting pushed too high here, which is going to mess with your bonnet line and your styling. So that's pretty much in one place. So the only alternative you've got is to cut the bottom of the pedal off and shorten the pedal to something like that. So now your foot will fit. But now you've got a problem because this pivot, the ratio between that pivot and that pivot and the length of the pedal has been reduced. So here, this height has been reduced here, if that makes sense. Which means your pedal is going to travel less and it's going to be much harder to start the car. And if, it was, if this was a clutch pedal, it would be the same problem. Your clutch pedal would be much stiffer and the travel much shorter which makes it not a fun car to drive. So, there is a solution. Now there's a whole load of maths, and I thought about doing a video going into the maths and all this sort of stuff, but it's really complicated and pretty boring stuff. If you want to go and know about the maths, of, there's, there's videos out there. I'm going to show you a very, very simplistic way to try and get around this problem and that is to keep the ratios the same. So if you've got your top pivot, your pivot here for the servo, and you know this height here, okay? Once you know these ratios, if you keep them sort of in the same range, by shortening this, you also shorten this by the same amount or percentage, then your brake pedal and clutch pedal should be very close, not totally, but very close to the way the original pedal was set up. It'll still be a little stiffer and the travel will still be shorter, but if you move this pivot up some, you're going to make it easier on the servo. Now you can't move the servo up by too much, because obviously you're going to be straight out of the bonnet. So you've got a little bit of play, so you can move this up and by this here, by this here. As long as this is the same percentage as this, you're going to be in a ballpark. 
So hopefully that's clear as mud for you. Thanks Science Guy. OK, with all that on board, we can take a look at the pedals on the prototype. Now I've got my shoe. Right, here's my shoe. <coughs> so when you're designing your pedals, start with your foot first and then work out where the comfortable positions are for the clutch, brake and accelerator or gas pedal. And they are the positions you've got to work with and then you've got to then figure the rest out. I'll bring the camera in so you can have a closer look. So here we have the pedal assembly. You have the accelerator, you have the brake in the centre there and the clutch. It's a bit tight in here and unfortunately it's a bit dark as well so I'm not sure if this is going to come out too well but let me just get the shoe and put it there we go on the brake pedal. As you can see that's a nice comfortable position. Yes, you've guessed it, I'm time travelling again, which means I've made this episode too long. So anyway, I think I'm going to end it here. Oh, before you go, I'm now on Facebook, um, maybe I'll put an icon here, and I'm also on Instagram, put a little logo here I think. So if you want to connect to, to me through these two, you can do because obviously the comment section on YouTube is not too good. So anyway, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. So tune in probably tomorrow where we'll see the rest of this pedal assembly in the prototype. So see you then. Bye then.